Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is a video from Student Skin Consult, a teaching website of the Australian Institute of Dermatology. Today we're going to look at uh, taking a skin history, which is an important topic in any specialty in medicine. So, what's the best way to learn to take a skin history? Well, you should watch and listen to an expert in the skin clinic. However, the main points are as follows. Always ask the patient, you know, how the rash started. Um, get them, let them talk on, the, on their own terms at first, but then don't let them ramble on too long. You want to know where in the body did the rash begin, because many rashes occur uh, at specific sites in the body, specific areas, and also it can give you a clue if uh, it's been a contact dermatitis um, as to something that came in contact with that particular part of the body. And then you always want to know what have they put on it because they'll almost invariably have put something on it and sometimes the rash you're seeing is a result of uh, an application that someone's applied to the skin. Also, you want to know if they've put a strong topical steroid on their rash because steroids will reduce inflammation, will modify a rash, may make a red scaly rash into a red non-scaly rash and that can be difficult when uh, you're trying to formulate a diagnosis. So, always ask, you know, what's the patient applied to the, the rash in the last week? Then, always ask, have you had anything like this before? or any other skin diseases, particularly eczema in childhood. Um, they may be presenting to you with a condition called guttate psoriasis and here they've had plaque psoriasis at the elbows and the like before. Or they may have an adult manifestation of atopic eczema such as a hand dermatitis and you find out when they were younger that they had flexural dermatitis at the front of the elbows and behind the knees. So that information is very useful. And then always ask, is there any family history of skin disease or asthma, eczema, or hay fever? In other words, is there any atopy uh, in the family? This helps um, because if there's a history of asthma and uh, hay fever in the family, then it wouldn't surprise you if uh, one of the children suddenly present with uh, uh, potential eczema. Now, so you've asked, where did the rash begin? What did you put on it? Have you had anything like this before or any other uh, skin diseases in childhood? And is there any family history of skin disease or family history of atopy? So the next little question is, what other information would you need from a patient that might tell you more about the cause of the rash? Okay, drugs. What drugs are, is the patient on? Because many of the rashes we see in dermatology are drug induced. What's the patient's occupation and hobbies? That gives you an idea of the things that they may be exposed to, especially if you're considering that it's a dermatitis. So let's go on and have a little look. Okay, what drugs are you on, including medications or supplements from health food stores? Always remember the things from the health food stores. You often have to extract that sort of information from a patient. They may not volunteer it to you. Um, so many rashes that we see are drug induced, so you do need an accurate drug history. And say you think this rash is uh, due to a drug that they're on, well the most likely drug is the one that they've most recently started. So that's another important question. Are any of the drugs you're taking new? Then we said you need to know a bit about occupation and hobbies. Well, I mentioned about contact dermatitis. And then you want to know what their job is. Is, is their job making their problems worse? You know, nurses in a hand uh, and recurrent hand washing, exacerbating a hand dermatitis. Or, you know that they're a nurse, they have to have rubber gloves on all the time. Perhaps it points to a latex rubber glove dermatitis that they may have. So occupations and what the patient actually does, what they handle is important if you're taking a good skin history. Now I have to admit that that's generally about all I ask uh, from a history. Now I've sort of commented there rather rhetorically, if you're a kind empathic doctor, you'll also inquire about the psychological impact of the disease in the patient. You really should, because skin disease, often because they're chronic, they can have quite a significant psychological impact on patients. Um, and also taking a good history shows that you care. It shows that you're interested, you're interested in the patient as a person. 
And if you have the patient trusting and respecting you, then you're going to get better compliance with your treatments. Why do I mention that? Why do I say you'll get better success? Well, the major cause of treatment failure in medicine is patient compliance. Or as I say, they're more exactly the lack of it. They just don't do what you've told them to do. They either don't take the tablets in the way you've told them to take them, or they don't put the creams on as frequently uh, as you've told them. So it's always important to get the patient on side, show them that you're going to try and improve things for them, try and reach the diagnosis of their condition, and certainly try and improve their uh, um, what's happening to them in their life. If you do that and they believe you, then they're more likely to comply with any treatments that you give. So before we finish, um, what do you think this rash is? Flexural eczema in a child, front of the arms, front of the elbows. And how would you treat it? See what the answers are. Okay, this is the most uh, typical presentation of atopic eczema at a very typical site. In an eczema, not only is it a red scaly disease, but usually have some little erosions in the skin, slight weeping as well. And then it says, how would you treat this? Well, usually a moisturizer. I've said 10% glycerin and sorbeline, but uh, some of the um, other moisturizers are, are just as good, particularly the oatmeal ones. Um, a steroid cream. I've said a bit of beta-methasone, 0.02%. Uh, you'd put that on after you've moisturized then I've said a little bit of an antibiotic cream. Perhaps you wouldn't really need it in this one. It doesn't look as if it's uh, secondarily infected there, but I'd have to say that most cases of severe eczema like this, they usually are secondarily infected by staphylococcus. And a little bit of topical mepiracin, or Bactroban cream, is, uh, is quite useful. So, skin history. Ask about where the, the rash began. Ask what you've put on it. Ask about uh, occupation, ask about drugs, and uh, make sure that you're taking an interest in the patient and the patient understands that you are as well. That way, compliance with your treatments will be excellent and uh, they will talk highly about you to their friends. And that's probably the best recommendation you can get. Thank you very much.